This is Daryl from Pennsylvania. When I'm not busy arguing with a four-year-old, I'm stacking Benjamins. No, Daddy! Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and who turned on every single light in this place? You think Joe's mom's made of money? Seriously, someone needs to tell these guys about energy conservation. You'd think they'd already know because today we're tackling a headline about money leaks you need to plug. Here to help us with just that and share a few money leak stories of her own, we welcome from madmoneymonster.com, Mrs. Mad Money Monster. And from Afford Anything, please welcome Paula Pant. And now, the guys who's rounding out this here roundtable, from LenPenzo.com, we welcome Andrew Lincoln. I'm just kidding. He's busy getting written off The Walking Dead. It's just Len Penzo. But we're not just talking about money leaks. We'll still have time to answer a listener question and, of course, my trivia. And now, the guy leading this band of misfits, Joe Saul Sihai. What a great band of misfits they are. Welcome to Friday. I am Joe Saul Sihai, Average Joe Money on Twitter. And man, do we have some fun for you today because we are giving up. We're throwing away our normal format. And well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you what we're doing. It's gonna be our little secret. But something that's not our secret is our panel here today. Let's start in the desert where Miss Paula Pant is freshly back from Burning Man. I am. Nice transition, Joe. <laughs> for once. Some- <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I realized? That it's not until recently that I have worn pants. The entire summer, it's been like 108 degrees. I've worn either shorts or dresses every single day. And it wasn't until last week that I finally wore pants for the first time in four months. Welcome to Deep Thoughts with Paula. <laughs> first time I've worn pants. <laughs> I mean, I guess that, that means winter is coming. A guy who's not wearing pants during this... Deep under Los Angeles, it's Mr. Len Penzo. Yes, that's true. I don't wear pants. I thought, you know, I thought at Burning Man, nobody wears pants there either, don't do they? Well, during the daytime, <laughs> but at night, it's incredibly cold. Okay. <laughs> what do we call her, Paula Pantless? Is that what we call her? <laughs> Is that the, do you got to change your name now? <laughs> you know, at stores, they sell these welcome mats that say home is where the pants aren't and I always thought it would be really funny if I brought one of those home to like my parents house because it would have such a strange double meaning you should totally be sponsored by Levi (laughs) you ever think about that like Paula Pants podcast presented by Levi (laughs) there's something there Paula don't tell me there's not guess who else we got on the show today Paula who else from, I believe, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. It's the one, the only, it's about time she got here, Miss Mad Money Monster herself, Lisa Harrison's with us. <laughs> That's right, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I'm so happy. And, you. What took you so long? Yeah, well, you know, invitations are a little slow, I guess. Snail mail, right? That's, I don't know. Yeah, Finally don't, got one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're in Lancaster County, does that mean your postman's uh, Amish? <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what it means. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Takes the, 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 the spe- horse and buggy. The speed of the horse and buggy to get there. So for the few people that don't know about your blog, the Mad Money Monster, tell them what you do because it's so awesome. <laughs> so it's a personal finance blog. I'm creatively known as Mrs. Mad Money Monster and my husband uh, is Mr. Mad Money Monster. We started it a few years ago after we nearly you know, destroyed our financial future by buying a big house we could barely afford. And then we just pulled the plug on that, rebooted everything and uh, embraced frugality. And here we are. We're uh, blazing a trail to uh, financial independence. I love your story. And sometime when we have more time, we got to tell your whole story because it's much deeper than that. Even like you guys, you just like, bam, things just completely change for you. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's a life of uh, making terrible decisions for a couple of decades. And then we finally figured that out. (laughs) With the help of this community, with the help of podcasts like Stacking Benjamins. No, hey. Yes, it's Wait, somebody learned something here? Uh, We got a reputation to keep. Do not do that. 
Don't, <laughs> don't throw us under the bus like that. What are you trying to do? Well, you know what will really help you see your future better, Lisa? What's that? Uh, Warby Parker. Thanks to Warby Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Warby Parker glasses. Thanks for supporting Stacky Benjamins to Warby Parker. Get boutique quality stylish eyewear and sunglasses at revolutionary prices. Does that mean revolutionary prices, Len? Does that mean 1776 prices? Because that'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> Uh, no, were glasses invented back then? Didn't Ben Franklin do something with glasses back then? Did he? In, what did he invent? The bifocal? I, 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 I think maybe. I, if only there were a way for us to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> if we had some device that would let us figure that out, you could. Tr- <laughs> hey, if we had Greg McFarlane here, he'd tell you exactly the day and month that that happened. So it would be amazing. We miss Greg for that reason. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Try on your Warby Parkers yourself by going to warbyparker.com slash SB to order your free home try on kit, which is free shipping all around. Warbyparker.com slash SB tells them his mom said that we sent you. And we're also brought to you as always on Friday by Magnify Money. You know, the average person, Lisa, saves 450 bucks when they go to Magnify Money. Did you know that? Whoa, that's fantastic. That will, (laughs) she could be on the show anytime. (laughs) You're almost as good at that as Len is. Like, wow, really? Hey, yeah. do you know, if you wore your Warby Parkers when you were at Magnify Money, would you get saved double the amount because the magnification of the glasses? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <That's> a- <laughs> Joe, when are you going to get a sponsor that's comedy training? I know. <laughs> this is, oh, ouch. <laughs> this is brought, Sorry, to, you by, this is brought to you by the Improv Comedy Training, where yeah. we're hoping to start someday soon. At uh, magnify, imagine how this would change your life, though, Lisa. Seriously, four hundred and fifty bucks <laughs> just by going there instead of walking into your bank and saying, "What do you got?" Whether it's your checking account, your savings account, getting less interest to the man with refinancing your student loans, credit card refinancing, whatever it might be. StackyBenjamins.com. What was that? <laughs> StackyBenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. I thought we were having a drum roll with that one. That was good. Well, we need a drum roll because we've got a great show today. So let's get this party started. And we're skipping the headlines today because it's time for, oh, it's that game that won't go away. We're playing Stacking Benjamin's game show tonight. And uh, Lisa, I'm sorry that you are on our game show. I feel bad for you. But this is a game for no fun and no prizes for anybody. We slogged through it. Actually... Keep selling it, Joe. That's right. So no pressure. That's great. So here's the deal. I have referenced an article that none of you, I've given none of you the link to, uh, so you don't know what this is, and no cheating there on my dad's shortwave, people. (laughs) (laughs) Now, this is going to be a list of things, and I'll tell you what the things are about in a second. I will tell you it's written by our good friend Kimberly Palmer, wrote this list of things, and... There are 12 on the list. And if you guess it in the first round, you're going to get one point for a correct answer in the first round. You'll get two points for a correct answer in the second round and a whopping three points for an answer, right answer in the third round. So you have a choice. If you got a good one, you can try to save it for later to get the big points, but then maybe one of the other contestants will get it or you can take it right now. How about that? Is that exciting enough? This is, this is, this is, we're getting into math here, Joe. Yeah. This is getting scary. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is some complicated rules. I, I don't know yeah. if I can follow this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like how many points? What's the structure? How do I get a follow? What are you talking about? The, about I, I don't get the, the, the passing. What, 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 you, you can pass a question? No. What, no, what I'm saying is if you got a great one that you think is on the list, you can say that you can choose a different one for your one point answer, hoping to get that for the one point and save the really juicy one that you know is on the list for three. You see what I mean? For, no, I don't, but let's yeah. play. For, no, I'm, I'm, miser- go ahead. I'm, I'm miserable already. Oh, boy. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to Game Show Rules with the Game Show Rules podcast. Uh, all right, here we go. The These are 10 money leaks. I said there's 12, but I just cut it to 10, apparently. Uh, 10 money leaks to (laughs) shut down. 10 money leaks with your money to shut down. So when you think about ways that your budget is leaking money, what's that going to be? So Lisa, you're the guest, so we're going to let you decide. Do you want to go first in the middle or last? Uh, I I don't know. I'll go first. All right. (laughs) 
So we got 10 on the list for one. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a good idea or not, the thing that you tell me. It just has to be on the list. If it's fantastic okay. and it's not on the list, I'm sorry, there's, there's no, no points. What's a money okay. leak to shut down? What about cable TV? Is cable TV on the list? <laughs> hey, cable TV. And actually, the answer was your favorite shows. It's number three on Kimberly's list. If you're still paying $100 or more each month for your cable package, she writes, then you might want to consider cutting the cord. That's because there's been an outpouring of cheaper alternatives from Netflix to Hulu to other digital streaming options. If there are specific shows you enjoy watching, look for the various ways you can access them. Lisa, you said that very confidently. Does that mean you've cut the cord? Yes, we have. A and? few years ago, we did. Yes. We do have Netflix, though. We do uh, enjoy our Netflix. So, yes. Has it worked for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We are... You know, we barely watch TV anyway. So even when we had TV, days would pass or a week would pass without even turning it on. So <laughs> it, it was definitely a leak in our house. What's uh, uh, How much were you paying for cable or satellite before that? Oh, I think, well, it's combined. It was combined with our internet. So I think the highest we paid was maybe 180. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we're down to about 50 or 60 for just internet. Yeah. Yeah. So the rest was just TV that we weren't watching. Paula, you've cut the cable too, right? <laughs> I've never had it. So my entire adult life, I've, I've never had paid for cable. You have no idea what you're missing, Paula. <laughs> I was 18 in 2001. And <laughs> by that point, the internet was ubiquitous enough. I was never a big watcher. And I don't know, I just I came of age in the post cable era. What are I'm you saying, Paula? What are you I saying? Mean, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying like, to somebody to a millennial, the question of have you cut cable doesn't necessarily apply because many of us have never had it to begin with. Like I've also never had a landline that I myself have paid for as an adult. My oh parents my had one, but I've never had one. So, Hi, welcome to the Young Kid Paula podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such an old guy. Like, yeah, remember the day. I know, I'm feeling bad about myself right now. <laughs> no. I think you're old. I still remember watching the Jetsons and seeing those guys talking to each other with a picture and going, oh, that'll never happen. You know, that's, that's that'll never happen. Yeah. Video phone. What's yeah, up with I that? Mean, what is, that's crazy. Yeah. Short waves with video. <laughs> Who would ever have that? You no. know, on the Jetsons, they also had a vacuum that ran itself, that powered itself, which is the Roomba. I'm surprised you even know who the hell the Jetsons are. <laughs> I'm showing my age. I never liked the Jetsons, but I love the Flintstones. So there you go. I like the Flintstones better I love the too. Flintstones, yeah. And Scooby Doo. I, I had a car. Oh that, yes, Scooby Doo. I, I had a car. Talk about frugal. I had a car that was like the, the that was like the Flintstones car. <laughs> Just that there were the pedals and the floorboard had rotted out underneath it. And you could see the road underneath my pedals. <laughs> Me too. Did you really? Me too. Absolutely. You could see. Yep. And I could see the road as I was driving. Yes. I actually have a story about that, too. When I was growing up, my mom had a, a good friend and she had holes in her beetle. It was a little beetle. And my brother and I would drop pieces of paper out the floor and look at it in the window. Just just, as a matter it. of fact, the hole in my car. I One day I, I spilled some orange juice in my car and I just I just left it. I, I didn't even <laughs> clean it up. <laughs> And the next day I went back to my car to go, go wherever I was going to go. And there were so many ants, they, an ant, figure out how this happened. And some ant scurried, you know, just randomly came up, went through that hole in the, in the floorboard. And there were a bajillion ants oh, in my no. car sucking up that orange <laughs> juice. Oh my God. It was a nightmare. Guys, we are in the only segment of the market where bragging about our car with no floorboards <laughs> like a... <laughs> Like having the cool tattoo. Oh, really? You got that one? Like, come on, everybody else is, is yeah. Wow, they're bragging about that. All right, uh, let's go on. Len, you still have the cable. Yes, I do. Yeah, because yes. you said that's an area you can cut, but you're not going to. I could cut it, but uh, the honeybee, that would never fly with her. That oh. would, we would be divorced. <laughs> So from a few weeks ago when Ryan Inman was on and we had the uh, J Money piece about selling Honeybee's ring, let's say that it was a choice between selling the wedding ring or cutting her cable, which one would be easier? Oh, my God. 
Which one would be easier? I think selling the wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the Penzo family operates, ladies and yes, gentlemen. Yes, it is. Yeah. Right there. We're simple people here. All right. Well, what, what do you watch on cable? <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm completely serious. What do you watch? The honeybee watches so many shows. It's just she loves like the housewives of all those cities, you know, Orange <laughs> yes. County and <laughs> New and, York. Uh, New and, York. She yeah. watches every single city's worth of those. She loves watching those Hallmark. You know, the Hallmark Channel has the Hallmark movies, TV shows. Yeah, like, I, yeah, like the holiday shows and all those. Yeah, she and our neighbor love them, you know. So they always talk about the Hallmark, uh, the the Hallmark romance novel shows. So she watches those, and then me and her together, we enjoy watching all those. I admit it, we watch all the reality shows. So you know, yeah, but, Paula, uh, there's this amazingly deep programming you can't get elsewhere, <laughs> like like Cash Cab. <laughs> this is fantastic stuff or the gross foods one what's that one called i don't know all right uh paula you're gonna be up next so we got nine left lisa got one for one point let's see if you can tie take a guess on what's on that list huh i'm gonna say atm fees atm fees are they on the list yay except it's even bigger than that paula we'll give you that one but it's bank fees in general if you're still using a bank that doesn't have a lot of ATMs convenient to work or home and you end up paying for fees just to take out money, then it's probably time to shop for a new bank. Sticking with in-network ATMs, withdrawing money directly from the bank or getting cash out at the grocery store checkout can also help you avoid those fees. Right now, Lisa, Paul is going, what's an ATM machine? <laughs> oh, God. I remember when they were called Mac machines. Oh, Does anybody remember ooh. that? <laughs> Money access card, if anyone is wondering. That is old <laughs> school. Money access card. I didn't have that machine. Yeah. Maybe it's a Lancaster County thing, a horse and buggy thing. I don't it, know. It probably is. <laughs> it's made of wood. It's made of wood. It takes them a while to create it. Right? Exactly. Yes, they get the whole community together to make one yes. MA, Money access uh, thing. Paula, you were going to say? Oh, in Cincinnati, they're referred to as genies or mm. genie machines. Mm -hmm. Genie's because, a whole network. Yeah, yeah. Fifth Third Bank is huge in Cincinnati. And so their network was genie and it had a little face of a, a woman on it. You could spot a Cincinnatian in the wild because they'd be the one saying, oh, we need to go pull money out of the genie. Isn't it? it, it, <laughs> isn't it I, mean, I just don't get I'm still stuck on Fifth Third Bank. Is it Fifth or is it Third, Paula? Uh, yeah, like Fifth Third is such an awkward name for a bank, right? Like fifth, f five over three. Like what? Like a, that's such a random fraction. Why would you choose that as your bank name? Yeah, yeah. Or why don't we just go with Fourth? You know, go with the middle. I don't know. But fourth Bank. I don't know. Like Fourth Meal, uh, which is Len's favorite meal at Taco Bell. I don't. I don't know. All right, Paula nails it though. So now it's Lisa one, Paula one in this. Amazingly intense battle. Len, it's your turn. You got eight left on the list. What do you think? I think I'll just wait till the third round. Are you seriously? Ooh. No, no, I'm not. No. I was <laughs> like, what? Hey, I, I'm gonna no. I'm gonna go with eating out at restaurants or or not bringing your lunch to work. Eating out at restaurants or not bringing your lunch. Oh, good. It's on there. <laughs> Nice job. <laughs> Hooray. Uh, Maybe I should have saved that for the third round. You should have. You were onto something. If you're not I'm a totally out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Len's second round guess is I got nothing. Yes. Can I, if I got nothing for two points, Jack, uh, food is on the list. If you're not a big cooker, then you might be overspending on takeout meals, planning your meals in advance and doing your grocery shopping accordingly can help reduce the temptation to order $40 worth of takeout a few times a week, which, as you know, can get expensive. Len, how often do uh, you and the honeybee and the family go out to eat at restaurants? Uh, once a week now. But but I've got to say, I've got to say, when we started out and we got our house 20 years ago, it was, I've told you this, this was, we were eating rice and beans the whole month long. I think we'd go one, one time a month and it would be a fast food joint, not very expensive. It just, as you get older and you make more money, you get more, you have a little more breathing room, but so we can afford to go out once a week now. But. but what's interesting about that too, is you made sure that the budget was intact first before you, you know, oh, yeah. went with the splurge. Yeah. But I mean, that, I mean, that was a treat. I mean, we, you know, going to not McDonald's, you know, but a higher, a little slightly higher end 
fast food joint, but, but yeah. yeah, that was a trip once a, once a month. Yeah. Not, not McDonald's like Wendy's cause you're not a heathen. <laughs> Of course. Yeah. Oh, and, and yes, absolutely. Yeah. I hope McDonald's wasn't one of your sponsors, Joe. Well, not anymore. I do not know. <laughs> Lisa, was that part of your big money turnaround was not eating out at restaurants as much? Oh, that was actually, he stole my next answer. Yes. Eating out yes. was, oh my gosh, it was terrible. We were spending so much money, so much money each month eating out. Yeah. But what's, I love it. I absolutely love eating out. It's I still struggle with it every single day. Too. It, yeah. it, it's, it's I, not good for the waistline either if you're not active. Absolutely. I love it too, but I'll tell you, the more I do it, the less I appreciate it. And I found that as we've cut back toward one day a week, and we'll go one or maybe two times a week, usually one, but every once in a while we're busy, I appreciate it a lot more. Like I like it a lot more. Man, when we were really busy selling our house, I, we were out almost every night and I hated it and I felt like crap all the time. Yep. It just, yeah. yeah. That's absolutely true. And it's a major time suck. You know, it, it takes so much time out of your evening or whatever you're doing, you know, to, to go out to eat and yeah. I don't know. Paula spends all day down at that hot dog joint that she brags about <laughs> all the time there in Vegas. I do love that hot dog place. Yes. They're what? really good. Yeah, what, do you, what do you put on that dog? Sprouts and, and uh... <laughs> uh, seaweed, jalapeno, crushed potato chips, bacon bits, garlic aioli, spicy mayo. What else? Uh, oh, avocado. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Len, what Paul is saying is as long as you're ruining it, you might as well <laughs> ruin the dog. One of my favorite fast food joints is Wiener Schnitzel. I, I mm. love Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, my God. That, huh? I've never been there. I haven't been there either. Oh my God. Well, you would think it sucks, Paul. This is not a gourmet hot dog you get, but it is, it is so good. I love Wiener Schnitzel. Uh, Paula, how often do you do restaurants? Um, I, when Will's around, we've eaten out quite a bit, but when I'm running solo, never. So, or ve- or almost never. Yeah. Most of my friends in Vegas, when, when my friends and I go out, we rarely will go out to a restaurant. Oftentimes in Vegas, it's go to a house party or go to a bar or go on a hike or something like that. So yeah, it hasn't been much these days. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, I seriously feel better when I don't go out that much and my pocketbook Mm -hmm. feels better. And to Lisa's point, I have half my time back too. Uh, the score at the end of round one, Lisa won. Woo. Paula won. Woo hoo. And Len won. Boo. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> and Len, I hate to do this to you, but it's in the official rules for this game. Oh, we turn no, it around you're backwards. Ba- oh, you're crazy. Okay. For the second round. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say not automating your finances. Not automating your finances. Is that on the list? Mm, oh, uh, crap. It's it's not automating your finances, I think, though, is kind of the maybe not on the list, Len. But when you save money on these things, like Lisa was talking about saving money on your cable bill, immediately you got to take that money and automate it to get it in your pocket. Look, the reason I said that is because people, if you don't automate your finances, you'll get these late fees. You forgetful, you throw your bill in the drawer, tend to pay late, and then you end up paying late fees. So that's why I was thinking, well, hey, then there, there's a money leak there. You know, people do that. The other part of that is like when you get your income right from your job, if you automate your deposits and stuff like that, uh, you automate your savings. And if you don't do that, you may be missing out. So, Paula, do you have anything automated that would surprise people? Oh, something automated that would surprise people? I don't think so. I mean, it's all the the standard have your credit card automatically pay in full every month from your bank account sort of thing. You know, have all of your various bills automatically get paid by your credit card and then have your credit card get paid by your bank account. It's funny because I heard somebody, Paula, say one time that they automate their savings, but they don't automate the bills because they find too many mistakes. How do you check Mm -hmm. for mistakes if you have your bills automated? I'm in the habit of looking over my credit card bills pretty regularly because oftentimes, even though I have it automated to pay monthly, I go in there and manually pay it, usually about weekly, because I like to keep my debt utilization score low. And so by virtue of doing that, I can kind of look over the last week's worth of stuff and it's still fresh enough that I remember it and can catch anything that's wrong. Yeah, I think that's you have to make time for that. You definitely have to get in the practice of that, I would think. Lisa, when you guys made your big financial turn, 
the big move. I have to believe that automating things was a big part of that. You know, I'm a little old school in this. I mean, there were so many years when I was pretty young and even as a single parent where it was tough for me to manage my finances. So I wanted to have control over it. So I, that's, that's carried over. So a lot of things aren't, aren't still automated. I like going in each month and saying this amount is going into, you know, the taxable account, this amount, I I, like, I'll schedule things. I'll schedule things for the month, but I I don't have everything automated. So you schedule, you schedule, this is happening today and then you do it. Well, not necessarily. Like I will schedule things for later in the month or whatever. I'll do it per month. Yeah. Each month I sit down in the beginning and I and I schedule it. So, but not everything is automated. I get more excited like when I say, "Oh, I have more money I can put into the taxable account this month." I'll sit down and, "Oh, there's $500 I can put over." So, I, it excites me. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's old school. I'm an odd bird. I'm sorry. There you go. No, but so I don't not th- everything's automated. Hardly that, anything is automated. No, but actually, I don't think that's that far out because I think that as you find extra money and you're able to move it over and high, do the high five, like that's <laughs> that's half the win. Like Len, you write about this all the time. Behavior is half the win, half the battle. Yeah, absolutely. I can't add to that, Joe. That's absolutely right. <laughs> it's like yes, uh, ta-da. Yes. I- Right. And financial independence is such a long journey. I mean, it can be, obviously. Um, so you need these little small wins along the way. So something to get you excited. So I love that, we- Lisa, celebrating <laughs> the little things. Because, yeah, you're right. It's it's an elephant. Eat it one bite at a time. Your next bite, Paula. How's that for a bad transition? <laughs> <laughs> Into these money leaks. What do you think another one is? Oh, I don't know how advanced this article is going to get, but investing fees investing fees is that on the list no oh. but invest they stuck to consumer stuff you and i aren't gonna have a throwdown about investing fees again are we <laughs> we we do that almost weekly joe <laughs> paula and i are like the hatfields and mccoys when it comes to <laughs> investing the fees like i'm like yeah don't go over joe, there joe is pro fee <laughs> well only if they go in my pocket but no 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 i'm not pro fee i just well we won't even get into that but yeah. but you threw the first grenade that time girlfriend anyone who's wondering what this is all about you've got to listen to the afford anything podcast yes. to find out nice oh job. there's a plug. there it is yes she throws a grenade at, she throws a grenade at me on my show and plugs her show <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works here. Yes. I'm just in the way. Just let me know. Do you want to take the mic, Paula? You want to just take over? The... Are, are you are you saying drop the mic? Oh, I think you just did. Though. Ooh. I, think you, I think you just did. No, good good stuff there. Uh, seriously, Paula, though, if everything else is the same, and this is how important I think uh, investing fees and paying attention to your fees can be. There was a study done recently: a person with one percent fees and another person with two percent fees. And the difference between those over a 30-year period can take away 10 years of your retirement, could take away 10 years of growth in your retirement. So I'm all about making sure that you don't get rid of the 10 years in your retirement. And and I think to that point, I think we both are on the same page. Mm. But Just apparently the author of the article is not because they didn't put it in the article. Yes. Damn it, Kimberly. <laughs> Can't yes. you just work 10 years longer and not even worry about the fees? Well, there Why it not? is. <laughs> Why not? Problem solved. Yeah. Yeah. Like when Dana Ansbach was on, she said, what's wrong with a life well worked? And I thought that was great. But Len, <laughs> I don't want to work 10 years because I gave it to somebody for fees. <laughs> <laughs> your last 10 years of employment. Yeah, I'm yes. paying off my uh, yes. my money manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What what are these last these last 10 years are devoted to uh, are 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 a bit are a big thank you to Mutual of Omaha. Charles Schwab. Right. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Here's here's my one finger salute, Chuck. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, the score. Oh, Lisa, you got a big chance here. The score is. I. I. This is. This is probably the best thing that's happened to you this hour. Uh, Len has only one. Paul has one. You get a chance to take a big two point lead. Ooh. Well, I have an answer, or a yeah, I guess I'm going to say monthly memberships, like gym memberships or magazine s- subscriptions, or. Is do people, monthly do people me- still get magazines? I'm not sure. <laughs> Are monthly memberships on the list? Wow. What? Oh. 
Oh, I quit. I'm I thought for sure they would be. That was a good guess. <laughs> that was a good guess. Yeah. Yeah, we got to write to Kimberly at U.S. News and World Report and tell her that, you know what, it should have. I think that one t- should have been on there. That was really a good one. Yes. <laughs> But are gym memberships well, really a leak if you use it, though, Lisa? Like, if you're using the gym membership. This is true. I mean, I was thinking back about my own life and the things that I cut, <laughs> and that was one of them. <laughs> it can be a leak. Well, so, and I would understand why a magazine would not want to put in cut your magazine subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> <Good point. laughs> Even if Kimberly brought that, I see the editor going, yeah, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, good, point. good point. Help good our point. own. Len, it's funny. I, I read an article recently that said that a lot of these subscriptions that are aspirational, like not just to Lisa's point, ones like the gym, but also things like Audible, where I'm going to listen to audiobooks and I never do. Or it's funny when you look at these aspirational things, people often sign up with good intentions and then don't, that money falls through the crack. Yeah. And you know what? You have to be careful because I do a lot of these things online. I subscribe to some sites online as well, and they're automatic renewals. So if you don't pay attention, the year goes by and and you haven't been visiting the site for a while. And then the next thing you know, there's on your credit card bill, you've just signed up for another year. You know, the stuff that you do all the time, obviously, you're, that's not a leak. But the stuff that you try and then let it go and forget about, that's dangerous stuff, man. That adds up. Len, how much does your bunker builder's uh, close Facebook group cost <laughs> you a year? <laughs> I tell you what, I do have a couple subscriptions to bunker prepping websites. <laughs> bunker. I kid you not. <laughs> I, I totally believe it. I've known you how long? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah, so the score after two rounds is Lisa won, the Money Monster team won, I'll say, uh, yeah. Team Afford Anything won, and Team Lenpenzo.com won. And you know what? We're going to take a break. Doug, let's get some water, and Doug's got our trivia. Hey there, trivia fans. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. Talking about money leaks really drives home how easy it is to blow through cash, doesn't it? What do we do to stretch a dollar? Speaking of stretching, what about folding? How about this question? According to the U.S. federal government, how many times can you fold a Benjamin during the life of the bill before it tears? All right, Lisa, we very carefully explained how this intricate game works. It's like two games in one. You didn't know how many. She's like, oh, my God, I got I'm in hell here with all the games. (laughs) But you get to choose first being the guest if you want to guess first in the middle or last. And it's going to be the closest without going over. So do you want to go first, middle, or last? I will go last this time. Nice move. Thank uh, you. <laughs> and Len, Len, do you want to go in the middle or first? Uh, the middle. Awesome. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Paula, to you. This is, this, <laughs> this is going according to uh, script right here. Paula, Uh-oh. you're now for everybody at home, Paula is leading three to two to two, and Lisa's playing for OG today. So it's Team Money Monster for the wonderful OG. So, Paula, that means you're up. Let's see. Well, I suppose the first question would be what is the average lifetime of a bill and how many? people would fold it as opposed to just stuffing it in their wallet, neither of which I actually have the answers to or even any approximate guesses. So answering, asking those two questions was useless, although an interesting thought exercise. Based on complete lack of anything to go off of, I suppose I'll just pull a number out of thin air. Uh, Square root of 17, (laughs) carry the four. (laughs) Raised to the ninth power. We're going to go with 582. 582. Len? Gosh, you know what? This is a $100 bill, right? I guess it doesn't matter whether it's a $100 bill no, or a $1 bill. It's, a, it's any bill. They're all the same. It's any bill. Okay. Well, they're made of cloth. I know that. There's a cotton, so they've got to be stronger than a piece of paper. Uh, Paula, you said 500 and something? 582. Mm-hmm. Gosh, people fold bills like a dollar bill. I mean, I can see that thing getting folded three times a day. Five years. Well, let's see. I think the lifetime of a $1 bill is like f- five years, four years. Let's say three years, which is a thousand days. And let's say it gets folded 
twice a day. I'm going to say 1,962. 1,962. So, Lisa, congratulations. Welcome to the dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> Where you, you got 582 for Paulo, 1,962. Uh, the last couple weeks in a row, everybody's been over. So who knows? Is that a hint? <laughs> it is. I will say this. It is not a hint because I, I do not know the answer. Doug's got it. Wad it away. Fold it over. Uh, well, I'm going to be way less methodical than Paula and Len. And I had a number that just jumped into my head. And I, I think this could be it. So I'm going to say. <laughs> what your confidence. I'm yes. going to say 1,057. 1,057. Wouldn't that be awesome if that was it? That would be awesome. That would be incredible. I'm going to send you a Hickory Farms summer sausage if it's 1,057. <laughs> We're so happy that Stacky Benjamins is brought to you by Magnify Money. If you head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash Magnify Money, you're going to find the best in savings accounts, checking accounts, and all kinds of ways to consolidate your debt to pay less interest to the man, whether it be with student loans, auto loans, credit cards, consolidation loans. It's all there at Magnify Money. If you're somebody that pays off all of your bills every month, like you should, guess what? You can play the credit card reward game then. Of course, as our good friend uh, Mr. Ramsey says, credit card rewards aren't going to make you rich. But my feeling is, why not? make a few extra dollars. A lot of my recent trip to Germany and Austria were on credit card reward points. But today we're not going to talk about that. We're going to go to stackybenjamins.com forward slash magnified money. You might hear me typing here and let's take a look at what interest rates are. And of course, these might change between now and the time that you hear this, but I'm comparing the best offers for savings accounts. I click the get personalized offers button and update the results. And it looks like we've got a couple at 2.25% right now. My Savings Direct gets an A score, very transparent when it comes to their fine print score. I love the fact that Magnify Money has a fine print score and tells you you might, might be a little complex or might not. But My Savings Direct, it says it's very transparent, zero minimum deposit to earn money and a 2.25% interest rate. Also, Utah First Credit Union gets a B on their fine print score. You have to open the account with at least 50 bucks and it's at 2.25. Then we have Vio Bank at 2.1, CIBC at 2.1, Salem 5 Direct at 2.05. They've usually been the winner, but then it goes uh, from there. Several over 2% now. That's good to see. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. When you're ready to compare, ditch, switch, and save, they make it easy. Thanks to Warby Parker for supporting Stacky Benjamins. Warby Parker, for the three of you that don't know what Warby Parker is, they make high-quality, stylish, and affordable glasses that start at only 95 bucks, including prescription lenses. Plus, lenses include anti-glare and anti-scratch coatings. For every pair of glasses they sell, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to somebody who's in need as well. I used their home try-on program myself. Here's the way it worked. I went on the Warby Parker site. I found five different pairs of glasses that I wanted to look at. They sent me five pairs of frames, all boxed together very easily and neatly, and I knew which ones I was trying on. I kept the frames for five days before I sent them back. And by the way, sending them back has this whole easy-to-use prepaid return shipping label super easy. Send them, decide which ones you like. I personally like the Hardy on my face. Your face may be different, but I'm just telling you, the Hardy's a pretty awesome frame. But the fact that Warby Parker makes the whole thing easy online and risk-free, this home try-on program really worked well for me, and I think it'll work well for you too. So when you head to warbyparker.com forward slash SB, Make sure you go to warbyparker.com forward slash SB. That will tell them that we sent you and place your home try-on order. Make sure then to download the Warby Parker app from the iTunes app store. And you've got everything that you need. Super easy. Great customer service. Love everything about Warby Parker, but especially love the glasses that I got. Try Warby Parker out for yourself. See how good you look in their frames. Go to warbyparker.com forward slash SB to order your own free home try-on kit with free shipping all around.
All right, so here's everybody's scores are now locked in. Uh, Team Money Monster says 1,057. Feeling good about that, Lisa? Oh, absolutely, yes. Absolutely. I, I think this could be it, yeah. Team Afford Anything, 582. <laughs> Paula? We'll see. And Team Len Penzel, 1,962. That's the year Columbus sailed the ocean blue, by the way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you know that. All right, Doug, what's the answer? Hey there, trivia fans. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I'm back with your thrilling folding money trivia. Here was the question. According to the U.S. federal government, how many times can you fold a Benjamin during the lifetime of the bill before it tears? While paper tears fairly easily after just a few folds, money is meant to go through the wash, through the dryer, and maybe even through Joe's mom's Zumba class. That means a Benjamin, or any other bill for that matter, can be folded 4,000 times before it tears. Get it right? Fold your hands together and use them to pat yourself on the back. Actually, that'd be pretty hard to do. See ya! No. Oh, my sausage God. for you. <laughs> we, Len, you're the winner. You were closest. And certainly without going over. And without going over. Because the last two weeks I was closest, but I went over. I was so happy nobody said like 6,000. 8,400. <laughs> so, and Paul, the way you were going through all that math, I'm like, she's going to say 8,950. Wow. I was an order of magnitude off. <laughs> he, was, he was way, way, way off. Hey, something we're not off on, though, is answering questions from people to dial wrong numbers. Apparently, this was a wrong number because somebody asked this crew for help. I was so surprised to see the voicemail down here in the basement blinking. And today we're going to help out our new BFF, Derek. Say hi, Derek. Hi, Joel and OG. This is Derek. I was listening to your Friday fintech segment with Stuart Sop on it. I noticed that you guys bring on a lot of these people who talk about how their app will provide a debit card to children as opposed to cash so that they can get used to living in a cashless society. I would just like to further the conversation a bit because I noticed it always ends with children need to learn how to live in a cashless society, and that's why they should receive a debit card. But I think maybe the reason why parents are resistant to the idea to begin with is because it's harder to explain to a child that that money, which is essentially just numbers on a computer screen now, is tangible, something that's tangible and a useful tool. So I was just curious. I'm not a parent yet, but I do plan on being one in the future. How would you explain what is an intangible thing that's actually tangible to a child. Because growing up, I always was able to look at a piece of paper or a coin and understand that that is money and see it accumulate in my bank. It's harder to explain when it's intangible. So anyways, I was just curious, your thoughts. I'm sure other parents have the same question too. Or maybe not, but either way, thanks. <laughs> or maybe not. Just wondering, Derek, it sounds like he's driving down the road, just wondering and bringing us along with him. But that's a great question, isn't it? Lisa, how do you explain to a kid what money is now that you can't see it and it's somewhere nebulous that you take out this little piece of plastic for? Well, I think it's a great question. And I actually agree with Derek that it is important to actually hold it in your hands. And there's an emotional component, right? There's an emotional component when you lose that money, when you spend that money that you don't get when you have a card. I mean, that's obviously proven, right? We all spend more money, way more money than we would if we had cash. So um, I've definitely been teaching my daughter with actual money in her hand. She does some chores, you know, she earns some money. I will actually go to the ATM. That's what it's called these days, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and I will get, you know, a bill out and I will hand that to her. And she knows if she wants to buy whatever toy, it's going to cost her, you know, X number of dollars and that's going to take her X number of weeks. So I do agree that it's important, at least if you're building those foundations at a very young age, especially um, that they actually see it and can touch it. What do you do then, though? Do you then transfer over to say, well, this all goes on this card, and what you really yeah, take is... Yeah, so there is that piece of it, right? You do have to explain that. So she has her own little investment account, and, and I've taught her what the value of money is, I guess, with actual bills in her hand. So when we do have cash, which is rare, because who has cash these days, yeah. I will lay out maybe a few hundred dollars and say, this can buy this, you know, and 
10 of these is a thousand dollars and you can buy a car with X number of dollars, you know? So she, I've been doing this with her since she was pretty much born. <laughs> what, how <laughs> old is she? She's starting to get it. She's what? nine now. Yeah, she's nine. Just, That's what I was going to ask yeah. you just for reference yeah. for parents out yeah. there. So at yeah. ni- and nine years old, I think is a good age to kind of make that transition point. Len, how about you? It's, it's, you've got two kids, kids with plastic. We didn't give him a card like that, so... He gave them uh, bars of gold. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I've given him gold coins and silver coins, and I've taught them that money is gold and nothing else. Everything else is credit, right? And that's kind of what we're talking about here on on a debit card. But, you know, what I did with my kids, I gave them ledger books. They got their allowances every week. You know, they got so much for each chore, and they recorded their chores in their ledger book, in the credit column. And then when they wanted to buy things, they could ask for money out of that ledger book. And then they would record it as a debit and I would give them the cash in hand. So, and I would give them the actual cash and then they would take that cash and then they would go spend it. And that's where they got the tangible value from. They recognized that I need $5. I want to go buy a toy or whatever I wanted to buy at the store. And that's where it turned into something tangible. I like the idea of a ledger book because who keeps a checkbook balance anymore? You know, I used <laughs> yeah, to see nobody. It. No, I oh, remember right. seeing that growing up all the time. People in the grocery yeah. store aisle and they would uh, pull up. This is back in the day when they would punch in stuff at the grocery store. <laughs> they, they well before Paula's <laughs> well before Paula's time. <laughs> But they, What's the grocery store? Is that where the Instacart people go? <laughs> that's right. That, that's where the Amazon people go to get your stuff that gets delivered to your house. <laughs> right. Or the Task Rabbit goes. They, uh, <laughs> but you'd see everybody right there. R- R- Len, you remember these days? You, they'd open up the book and they'd write yep. it down right there in the check register. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and if you didn't, you'd be in trouble. Really, you forgot. But you know what? The ledger book, I'm glad I let my kids do that because um, it taught them kind of basic accounting. It taught them debits and credits. It helped their math skills. It actually taught them uh, how to save. They could see their savings going up. It's like a passbook account, right? You get your, your savings account, you'd have the passbook, and you'd open that up, and you'd see the number on there back in the old days. But they would see their savings rise as they entered it into their ledger book, or they would see it fall as they started pulling money out and and spending it. So, you know, it worked. I'm glad you did it too, Len. I mean, you said you were glad you did it. I'm glad you did it because you just gave us two and a half good minutes of good radio. So (laughs) (laughs) nice nice work. Uh, uh, And I still have those ledger books, by the way, which are really cute because back when the kids were, I still have them to this day. I've kept them. It's like, you know, that's a little souvenir of the kids growing up. But to Derek's real question, how do you then transfer that to an appreciation of plastic where they are today? Because nothing you said there helps them deal with this plastic. It's hard. That's tough. I think they have to understand the value of things and what things cost. I think that's where you can make that transition. Yeah. And good point with the ledger. You can do the ledger with your plastic too, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Paula, uh, uh, this life of plastic. So jumping in here, a couple of comments that I want to make is number one, kids are pretty good at understanding. Fundamentally, the question is, how can a child understand a concept? a concept that's not visual. And kids are pretty good at understanding other non-visual concepts such as germs, nutrients, calories. Those are all things that we cannot see, we cannot touch. But even kids as young as the first grade have a an idea, they may not know the nuances of it, but they have an idea of this is junk food and this is healthy food because this has nutrients and this doesn't. Or, you know, they'll have an idea of this is germs and I need to wash my hands or yeah, they've got vivid imaginations. That's why kids are many of them love ghost stories and haunted houses. They've got these really vivid imaginations. And so the fact that something is not tangible doesn't necessarily preclude a kid from being interested in it. In fact, sometimes kids are of anybody the most interested in things that they cannot touch or see or explain, but like you, ghost stories. You like these ideas, though, that Lisa and Len have of starting, though, with the tactile part of it? Because, you know, a lot of people talk about money. Susie mm-hmm. Orman even talks about organizing the little bit of cash in your wallet it gives well, you this one, appreciation for money. Maybe. I mean, so one thing that I think could work is the gold star concept. Since in a cashless society, money is numbers on a piece of paper that could be exemplified by stickers or gold stars on a chart. And that way, those gold stars are another form of numbers on a piece of paper. It's a sticker on a chart. 
So it's married a little bit more closely into the numbers on an electronic screen model. Yeah, just another way that we marry like what this is represented somehow that they can see it versus just this little piece of plastic that means nothing. Right, yeah. So like a sticker on a chart in the living room or, is symbolic of that, – that sticker or those gold stars are symbolic of those pixels on the electronic screen. Right, or next to the uh, bunker. <laughs> yes, gold gold stickers next to the bunker. I think, Lisa, you mentioned an allowance. How does the allowance work at, at your house? Well, she does some work. Then she gets paid. If she does her work, she gets paid. If she doesn't, she doesn't get paid. And it's pretty simple. And if she wants to buy something, you know, she doesn't buy it unless she has all the money. So if she's $2 short, I'm sorry, you can't afford it. You're not going to buy it on credit. I'm not going to give you the money and then you're going to pay me back. That's not happening. So that's how we work it. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, thanks for the question, Derek. If you've got a question for the show, head to stackybenjamins.com and hit the questions tab at the top and you'll see all the ways to interface with us right there. And now it's time, guys, for the thrilling <laughs> conclusion <laughs> to the game show that will not go away. It is the game. <laughs> it is. It is the game show that everybody's talking about, everybody meaning me, uh, 10 money leaks to shut down. We've identified three of them so far. That means we've got seven more on the list, and we're on to the big, exciting third round. And Lisa, you get to go first. Oh, gosh. Okay. What about, did somebody say a credit card interest that uh, you pay on a credit card. Did uh, anybody said, say that? We said bank fees, which I think would be credit card interest. Okay. So then I'm going to go with mobile phones, like data plans that you're Here we go. You can spending. Sh- show me data plans. <laughs> hey. <Wow>. Yes. <laughs> Phone bills made the now list. Now the pressure's on. Uh, <laughs> Kimberly said, you sweating a little, Len? Uh, Kimberly writes, take a close look at your most recent phone bill and check for any tacked on fees such as overage fees or data plans you don't need. If possible, switch to a lower cost plan or even a cheaper service provider. Cell phone service is a competitive market with lots of options. And I, you know, we have people write in all the time at our basement Facebook group about how much money they saved. For me, I live in a spotty service area and I really need my phone service. So it's tough for me to switch. But uh, Lisa, have you switched phone providers? No, I, we have not, um, mainly because my husband needs his, well, he thinks he needs his like good high end <laughs> phone provider, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> but we did downgrade our data. And I found that even when they put us on like the snail data, that yeah. it doesn't affect us too much, especially when we're home, and we're using Wi-Fi anyway. So, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Now that my kids are gone, I lowered my data too. And it was amazing. Like mm-hmm. they always said it wasn't their fault and they both left home. <laughs> It was totally their fault, <laughs> just not to throw them under the bus. Paula, what's your cell phone plan look like? I, I go for unlimited talk text data and yeah, love it pretty much. Yeah. Un- unlimited so. talk text. So, so you got the daddy O plan. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you cut, it's funny because you cut what's not important to you, mm-hmm. the cable, and then with your phone, which is important to you, you go ahead and spend money. Yeah. I mean, data particularly, I don't actually care that much about talking or minutes. But texting and data are the two things that I do a lot of. Yeah. So it just makes sense to have those two in unlimited quantities. Len, how about your house? I have the work plan. So um, my phone service is paid for by the man. So <laughs> That's the way to do it. And it's funny because we <laughs> asked that question in our basement Facebook group before. And there's a lot of people who thought they might be able to take advantage of that and are not. Like if, oh, it, yeah, yeah. If, if work will provide that and uh, yeah. they, they're, they're not a stickler and you don't go over and you know, yeah. you, you have to know your company's approval, like what you can use it for. You probably have that through work, Len, what you can use it, what you can't use it for. Uh, stay within that. You're probably good. Yep, absolutely. All right, Paula, to send this baby to at least a two-way tie and an asterisk <laughs> on this whole game, which makes it a, an, an hour-long soccer match. Or there's a <laughs> tie at the We got to go to penalty kicks. If we, <laughs> yeah, if that's we... right. I think we're going to skip that. But, <laughs> but Paula? So part of me is tempted to say clothing. But wait, okay, what, can we go over what we've talked about? Yes. Can we go over? Yes. So 10 money leaks to shut down. Your favorite show, she says, cable and satellite, bank fees, phone bills, and food. 
And food was a general category? Food was a general category. Okay. And bank fees. Gourmet and- hot dogs. <laughs> That's right. All that garbage on your hot dog. Hmm. I have a number of ideas that are coming to mind. And so now I'm trying to figure out which one she would be most likely to choose. If you know Kimberly, and she's been on the show a couple times, she is very straightforward. Very much. Like when she writes stuff, it is very much common sense stuff that you go, oh, why didn't I think of that? Because it is very, very on point. Okay, I'm going to go with beauty-related expenses, such as hair, skin treatments, nails. Pedicures, manicures. Yeah, any, anything in the broad beauty category. Yay! Man, the judges took a while on that one, Paula. Because the answer was, and they gave this to you, selecting the expensive brands. She says, if you're drawn to certain brand names that come with high price tags, and I'd say beauty products are squarely in that category, wouldn't you? Then it might be time to rethink that decision. Prescription drugs, face cream, shampoo, and more can be just as effective in generic form. Do some quick research by comparing ingredient labels before making your final decision. It might save you some serious dough. I do that very much now in in a lot of grocery shopping. Paula, you do that with a lot of your shopping? With in terms of facial moisturizers and sunblocks, Olay, which is a drugstore, you know, you can get it at Target. It's not one of the high-end moisturizer sunblocks. Olay is fantastic. Olay SPF 30 for sensitive skin has 7% zinc oxide. So it's got a, a really solid level of physical sunblock in it. There you have it, Olay. If you want to sponsor the show, it's Joe at stackingbenjamins.com. Because, <laughs> uh, L- Len, I noticed that you use Olay all the time. Yeah, you know, another good one is Preparation H with lanolin. <laughs> Preparation H is fine. They throw that, they, they it throw, gets rid of the wrinkles under your eyes. They throw that lanolin in, it's an extra two bucks. So I just get rid of the lanolin. Who knew, I didn't know what lanolin is. I it, don't either, but it sounds, you know, they always say stuff has lanolin. It's supposed with, to be good. With lanolin. It's got to be good. It's got lanolin, Lisa. What yeah. else do you want? Yeah, come on. Wow. So we have a tie. Can we make this a three-way tie? No pressure, Len, but can we make this a three-way tie? Well, I okay, I'm going to go basic here. I think this is a good answer, but for some reason, I don't think it's on here, but I'm going to go with it. Buying premium gasoline. Premium gasoline. Oh, man. Some cars demand premium gasoline. Yeah, but not many. No, not Not many. many. Not many. Most people, you know, I know a lot of people, even if they put in the 89 octane, you know, it's like you don't need it. Most people, if you read your car uh, manual, it'll just say put in the basic 87 octane. Put it in. Absolutely. But that wasn't on our list, Len. So that means that the Mad Money Monster and Afford Anything, it's a tie. (laughs) (laughs) so we went through this whole thing for a tie you got to have some sort of tiebreaker well we might but i don't think we have time look at the time Len. (laughs) look at the time let's find out what's going on where all you guys are uh len let's start with you what's happening at the wonderfully named lenpenzo.com uh yeah i've started a new podcast the persistent itch podcast and you can all Stop by that and see that. Lisa has no, no idea I'm what the hell kidding. you're talking no, about. No, I don't have a podcast. Um, <laughs> wow, that, you know, I got a letter and somebody wanted to know what happens to stocks if the currency resets. More of that uh, oh. Lenpenzo doom and gloom stuff that you only see on Lenpenzo.com. So uh, if you're that, interested, stop by. That is interesting. That's very inter- interesting. Uh, Paula, what's happening to Ford Anything here in mid-September? On the Afford Anything podcast, we have an interview with Chad Carson, a real estate investor who talks about how he reached financial independence through rental properties. And a cool dude. Sorry? And a cool dude. Yeah, totally. Totally. I hung out with him. He came to one of the Chautauquas in Ecuador, which is this week-long workshop that uh, I have spoken at for the past three years. And so, um, yeah, he came to one of those and we hung out and we bonded and got to know each other. And so I invited him to come on the show and share his story of reaching financial independence. A Chautauqua? And speaking of financial independence. Wait a minute. A Chautauqua? Is that uh-huh. is that a vegan thing? Yeah, it's the main course at Benihana. It's one of it's the like 40 Chautauqua. <laughs> do, do, do you pay extra for the Chautauqua? <laughs> you have a little have it with the wasabi it's awesome I know. <laughs> sorry paula you were on a roll and we we got right in there a gluten-free vegan roll <laughs> uh we also uh, speaking of financial independence 
have a bonus episode, the September bonus episode, in which we I interviewed a bunch of people from Camp FI, Camp Financial Independence, and I asked several people to share a story of a time that they did something that scared them. And so we have a community stories of people who are pursuing FI who are who talk about something that they've done that they found scary. You know, our mutual friend Jennifer, who listens to both of our shows, was mm-hmm. at that event. Did you get her on audio? Because she won't come. She wanted she was gonna do my money in the morning show with me, but she said she won't do video. So did you get her at least on audio? Yes, absolutely. Excellent. That's great for me. Nobody else besides you and I knows what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that explains my You'll have I to got... listen to the Afford Anything podcast to find out. Absolutely. You know, that explains a lot, Paula, because somebody invited me to Camp FI, but I, I guess I misunderstood and I ended up going to Camp FU, and it was not a pleasant experience, let me tell you. <laughs> those, those people were angry. <laughs> they were just angry. Lisa, thanks a ton for hanging out with us. Thank you for having me. I had a great time. Well, tell us what's happened at the Mad Money Monster. Uh, Mid-September, we're gearing up for the holidays, writing some uh, holiday posts and uh, considering a roundtable post with uh, quite a few bloggers based on their financial mistakes and recoveries. So, And you'll find that at madmoneymonster.com, correct? <laughs> Yes, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, I zoned out for a second. No, that's good. <laughs> she, she's like, she's like, I don't know. It's your story, Jerry. <laughs> that's going to do it for today. Lisa, again, thanks for hanging out. Guys, uh, thanks a ton. Doug, take it from here, man. What should we have learned today? So what did we learn today? First, take some advice from our panel. Saving money on your home and auto expenses are two great places to start if you're worried about your budget. Second, then dig into areas like your cell phone plan and insurance coverages are great money leaks to plug. But the big lesson? When you hear that they're having a game show in the basement, don't assume it's going to be Settlers of Catan and Ticket to Ride. I wanted to buy both those games and it turns out we're just talking about money topics. Again. Special thanks to Mrs. Mad Money Monster Lisa for her appearance on the roundtable. You can find Lisa's site at madmoneymonster.com or through our show notes at stackingbenjamins.com. Len Penzo appears courtesy of lenpenzo.com. Paula Pant appears courtesy of affordanything.com. This show was created by Joe Saul Cihai, produced by Richie Rutter Reese, and engineered by the amazing Steve Stewart. Online, visit us on Twitter at at SBenjamin'sCast or on our Facebook page. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and if you could only know what it really smells like down here. SB Podcast may receive payment on the show from sponsors and guests in the form of books, giveaway items, discounts, or other remuneration. There's no way you would take advice from these dorks, but like Joe's mom always says, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only, and before making any financial moves, consult with a real financial advisor. Hey, one more thing. I hope you're coming to see me in Orlando, Kansas City, and Detroit in the next few weeks. I'll be available for selfies and autographs after every performance. Of course. I can't deny my fans. Find tickets at stackingbenjamins.com forward slash tour. Welcome to the after show, the part of the show that doesn't exist. We had something completely else planned, but we threw that out the window because you people had a tie 
And there's a certain percentage of our listenership that won't let that happen. So we're going to do a lightning round and we're just going to go very quickly. First person to get it right. This is sudden death. First person <laughs> to get it right is going to win it. And Paula, I hate to say this, but we got to let the guests go first. All right. So, so Lisa, there are six left on here. Money leaks to shut down. Okay. I'm going to say insurances, reevaluate insurance, and maybe you can get a better you know, rate. Is insurances on here? Bing, 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 bing. <gasps> nice. <Yay! laughs> Your auto insurance premium, while you certainly want to make enough, sure you have enough auto insurance to protect yourself in an accident, you might find your rates have gone up every year. In that case, it's time to shop around for a better deal. If you have a good history with no accidents, then you're well positioned to negotiate your way to lower premiums too. A similar principle applies to homeowners. Requesting new quotes every few years can help lower your rates. By the way, I forgot to say in the main show, thanks a ton to Kimberly Palmer and uh, this great piece she wrote at US News and World Report for helping us out today, even though she didn't even plan that. So, uh, Paula. Yeah, but pa- Kimberly forgot the premium gas thing. So, you know, we'll have to. <laughs> yes, yes. Direct your hate mail to Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am Joe. All right, Paula, you got robbed, but, um, but I think it's great that uh, Lisa got the win in her first time yeah. here. Yes. Yay. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.